everybody and welcome back to the adventures of Mama Tove with me, Mama Tove. So if you can't tell already by the uh, theme of my backdrop today with my pineapples and my palm trees and my tropical mickeys and such, that today we are going to be doing my guide to traveling to the island of Kauai, of the Hawaiian Islands. So. Um, I'm going to be covering uh, ways to save money while you're there, um, places to eat while you're there, um, best beaches by activity to do, um, and lots and lots of tourist activities. So um, stay tuned. Here we go. So now I'm going to tell you what my picks for the best beaches based on category um, for you to visit while you're on the island. So I'm going to start out with uh, snorkeling. So in my opinion, the best snorkeling beaches are Tunnels Beach, Anini Beach, and Ka Beach. So starting out with Tunnels, uh, Tunnels is probably one of the largest snorkeling beaches in um, on the island of Kauai. Um, it's a got a long, long strip of coral. Um, it's just really, really good um, area, really easy access to get to, to go out and snorkel. Um, lots and lots of variety of fish. Um, same with Anini, which isn't too terribly far away from um, this beach. Um, Anini is very, very similar to this beach. Um, the only difference is that there's a little more parking, I think, to be able to access the beach. Um, Ka Beach is literally the last stop on the highway all the way around the island. The road ends basically at this beach. It's really, really pretty. Um, it's a much smaller beach than the other two, but if you um, swim out to the coral, um, there's lots of fish out there, lots of sea life and stuff. Um, all three of these beaches I've been to and have seen at least at one point, there's lots of tons of sea turtles, a bunch of tropical fish, a snowflake eel, and even the Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Wapua A, which is the state fish. Boogie boarding beaches or surfing beaches. Now, um, the best, in my opinion, the best um, boogie boarding beach is called Brennikes, which is Brennikes Beach is located directly next to Poipu Beach um, in Poipu. It's uh, probably got the biggest waves that um, you can find if you want to boogie board. It's a nice small little cove. It's a really nice little spot. Um, however, there are lava rocks on both sides of the cove, so you need to stay further into the middle so as not to kill yourself um, crashing onto the rocks. Other than that, it's perfectly safe. Um, Sometimes during the winter months, the um, undertow and the waves can get a lot larger, so just be careful. You know, um, there are no um, lifeguards, I believe, on this beach, so you just have to be careful. Be smart about your boogie boarding. Don't do anything stupid. Don't ride the, ride the biggest wave in if, you know, you haven't done it before. So Brennikes is my number one pick. Here's a photo of my husband and his younger brother boogie boarding at Brennikes. The next two are Noilly Willy Beach and um, or Noilly Willy, no Willy Willy Harbor and Kelia Beach. Very very similar um, in their waves. Both have nice long strips of beach and sand to park yourself, so it's not too terribly crowded. Um, no Willy Willy is um, like you have to stay kind of sorta off to the. Right side of the beach is where the best waves come in because it's right in next to the cove. So the waves are a little bit larger on that side. So that's definitely a really good beach. Um, a little tamer than Brennikes. Um, so if you've never boogie boarded before, I recommend going to this beach before trying to go to Brennikes. Um, it's easier to learn and kind of get used to doing it before heading to some of the bigger waves, a little bit harder to catch and a little bit harder to um, use the boogie board on. So um, Kelia Beach is also very tame. It's located just north of uh, Kapa'a and it's a nice long strip of beach. Um, the waves are a lot tamer there however you probably will get a little more um, turn up of the sand and stuff so you'll be kind of have be pulling sand out of your your bathing suit and your pants and your hair and it'll be everywhere basically so um, just be aware that if you are going to boogie board it's going to be sand is going to be everywhere so those are the three boogie boarding beaches that I recommend. My last category for beaches is um, 
baby or children friendly beach, more specifically like young children and babies. Um, the best beach in my opinion to take your very small children to is Poipu Beach. Now it's located in Poipu, very very easy to find, um, very very populated beach, it's a very popular beach. Um, this beach also has a lifeguard so it's much, it's very safe. Um, however, uh, there is a little bit of danger. You don't want to go up over the rocks. Um, you stay inside the rocks where they've put them all up there to keep the waves from crashing in and making it safer. Uh, because those rocks are there, it makes it kind of like sort of a little wading pool area, very shallow wading pool for your little ones to kind of play in and stuff. It's very tame, very safe for them to play. Um, you don't want to let them go in by themselves, obviously. That's not safe, but um, but it's very, very tame, very, very calm, and nice and um, cool for you to cool off with your children. It's a really good beach to take your little babies to. Here's my husband and my three-year-old daughter playing at Poipu Beach. Second choice for um, a baby-friendly beach would be Hanalei. Um, Hanalei Beach is on the north side of the island. It's um, much larger than Poipu, very, very long, very, very um, scenic beach, um, or better known as Bali High from the movie South Pacific. That's where they filmed this, and um, that's what the song is based on. And the beach has a nice long pier that you can walk out to. If you're a little more adventurous, you can jump off the pier. However, it's a very tame beach, very sand-filled beach, and there's lots of space for you to park yourself on a towel. So it's a really good place to take your kids if you're just planning on relaxing and letting them play a little bit in the water. It's a very um, easygoing beach for you to take your kids to. So you'll find that to be the two beaches, I think, that are very, very tame, very, very accessible, and um, are good places to take your kids. So, those are my um, best beaches. This is my brother-in-law with my daughter and my niece at Hanalei. So now I'm going to tell you some really, really smart, really, really easy ways to save yourself uh, money while you're on vacation there. So, first of all, Stay somewhere, um, if you can, uh, stay at a hotel, resort, wherever you plan to stay, a uh, condo, uh, rental house, whatever. Try to find a place that has a kitchenette or a in kitchen, um, room in kitchen, um, somewhere like with a fridge because it's really, really nice to be able to um, maybe save yourself some money by staying in and eating breakfast in room. Which goes to my second point. Um, that there's a Walmart, there's a Costco, there's a Safeway, depending on where you're staying on the island, there's something nearby that you could go to and get a small amount of groceries to um, be able to eat um, at some point in your room if you decide to stay at your resort for the day and the food at the resort is super, super expensive, um, which it usually is. Um, you can, you know, get stuff to make some really simple meals like sandwiches or cereal or, um, things like that um, and eating them in room to save yourself some money and um, my what we usually do is we will go and we'll get like very small things like some pastries and um, bread and um, cereal and milk and we will eat breakfast in the room go, going along with that uh, there are farmers markets that are different days different times and stuff depending on where you are on the island you can ask the locals where they are um, you can ask if you're staying at a hotel usually they will know um, where some of the nearby farmers markets are and that's a really good place to go and get some of the fresh produce that's grown directly where you're staying on the island of Kauai um, the locals grow them themselves and they sell them at the farmers market so it's just like a farmers market here only it's tropical stuff that you can't usually get at home so you can get like bananas and mangoes and pineapples and star fruits and guavas and all sorts of stuff for super cheap um, in bulk if you want to they have lots and lots and lots of it and that goes along with eating breakfast in the room again you know make yourself a fruit bowl my mother-in-law every time we go she goes and gets you know pies and mangoes and all sorts of stuff chops up a bunch of fruit mix it into a fruit salad and that's what she has for breakfast every day so with a piece of toast so also um an another way that you can save money is by um when you fly into the island and you're still at the airport the area where the baggage claim happens um there's it's just a small you know little room and stuff only like two two little baggage claim areas. There's should be a little pillar in the middle of the room and that has um, 
all the way around it. You can look around it and there's like brochures for all sorts of different types of activities and restaurants and all sorts of things that you can do on the island while you're staying there. Um, it's very convenient. There's also a, um, uh, kawaii guidebooks like little magazines and stuff that tell you all sorts of activities and things that are going on while you're there they have um, also have coupons inside of the book not you know like a whole page full of coupons but as you're turning the pages they'll have an ad and there will be coupons attached for like a specific restaurant or a specific boutique or a tourist activity or something so it's worth your while to just look through it and see if there's anything in there that you might be able to get a discount on if it's, if there's anything in there that is interesting to you um, so that's a really good place to look too for example my uh, mother-in-law found a coupon for the Kauai rum company which has merchandise and I wanted to buy a t-shirt while we were there um, and she found like a 10% off coupon in the little guide magazine and I got to use it towards my t-shirt while we were there because I don't think there's a, an exclusion on what you buy. There was a little discount, so that saved me a little bit of money. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm going to tell you about all of the amazing activities that I have done and um, experienced on the island of Kauai. I am a huge, huge, huge tourist. Um, I love me some tourist activities. So um, here are all of the things that I love, love, love and have done on the island of Kauai. So first of all, um, Waimea Canyon. This photo from my honeymoon doesn't even begin to show exactly how beautiful it is. I think that it's a must do, like something that you just have to do. You, you get in the car, your rental car, you take a little drive up to Waimea Canyon Lookout and you go up and experience the beauty, the magnificence that is Waimea Canyon. Now, they call it the Grand Canyon of the Pacific for a reason. It's like a, a smaller, more condensed version of like the real Grand Canyon, the actual Grand Canyon that's here in the States. Now, I've never actually been to the Grand Canyon, the, the big Grand Canyon here. But I can tell you that this is just something that you need to see. You've got to experience it. Um, it may sound dumb. You may think it sounds stupid until you actually get up there. And then you view, you see it for yourself. And, and there's no doubt in your mind that it's beauty. It's gorgeous. It's just absolutely stunning. You see, you know, waterfalls off in the distance. You see all sorts of, you know, lush greenery and stuff for as far as the eye can see. So it just is something that you're going to have to do and have to experience while you're there. The second thing on my list is the Blue Dolphin Tour. So there's tons and tons of um, boating tours that will take you up to the Nepali coast. It's the only way that it's accessible is through a boat or if you decide to take a helicopter tour. Now I will not get into a helicopter because I have a thing with heights and flying and it's just a bad combination. I'm not going to do it. So. Um, if you are like me and you don't want to get in a helicopter, it's the only way you're going to be able to see the magnificence that is the Nepali Coast. Now, if you don't know what the Nepali Coast is, if you've ever seen the movie Jurassic Park, it's basically when they fly in on the helicopter and you see the island for the first time, that is the Nepali Coast. It's absolutely stunning. You've never seen anything like it. The charting tour, the boating tour that I have been on and I've recommended to friends and family that have gone up there and tried it and nobody has had a bad time. Everybody loves this tour. I'm not saying that there aren't other tours that aren't good, but I have experienced this one and I can tell you flat out that it is a good one. I haven't been on it in a few years, but um, from what I have heard from people that I've recommended it to, they have all had a very good time and all thought it was well worth their money. They. Um, do two different tour types. Um, there's the morning tour into the afternoon where they take you out in the morning and you go out and they feed you lunch and you go out and you snorkel in the water once you get out to the point that they're stopping at um, for a little while with the view and then you come back and the second type of tour that you can do is the sunset tour where it's you go out and there's dinner and then you're out in the water on the boat um, to see the tour or to see the mountains. Um, while the sunset's happening. So I guess one maybe you would do with like family or something and then if it was maybe you on your honeymoon, you'd do the sunset tour, which is a little more romantic probably with the sunset going on in the background. Um, 
I will warn you that it is kind of an adventurous thing. Um, the water gets a little choppy if you get seasick. I wouldn't take the tour if you have a thing with like, you know, boats being sloshy a little bit because um, it does get that way. It's a little rough out there um, until you get past a certain point. Um, so it can get, be a little scary. The waves do kind of come up over the boat a little bit now and then. So just be aware that that can happen. So the Blue Dolphin Tour and specifically a Nepali Coast um, boating charter is something that you got to do while you're there if you've never done it before. Next thing is the Kauai movie tour. Now my husband and I did this um, before we had kids on our honeymoon and it was super super fun. I wouldn't recommend doing it if you've got like kids. They may get bored. They may not want to absorb like super fun information, super you know like trivia facts and stuff like that about movies that were filmed that have been filmed on the island of Kauai. Um, you'd be surprised how many movies have been filmed on the island of Kauai. Now um, the movie tour specifically is the only tour on the entire island that has access to the Coco Palms Hotel. If you don't know what the Coco Palms Hotel is, it's a very, very famous, very amazing hotel that was built um, way back when uh, during, you know, like old movies, old style Hollywood, like Elvis and uh, Mary Tyler Moore and that kind of thing. The movie Blue Hawaii was filmed there and many, many, you know, celebrities of that era um, chose to stay there. That was like the hoity-toity place to go. So. It has been destroyed um, a very long time ago by one of the hurricanes that came to the island and it has never been refurbished or rebuilt or anything. It's just a ruin. Um, it's amazing to see. It's kind of one of those things where once you see it, you realize like it's like a ghost town. It's like nobody will ever know what it was like to stay at this during its um, heyday. You know, it's just really cool to see something that was so awesome that was destroyed and um, nobody's managed to do anything with it. So it's really cool and you can really only see it on this tour. So, um, so that's a big highlight. Um, also, on the movie tour, they will take you up to where the gates of Jurassic Park were in the movie. Um, now the gates are not there anymore. The posts for the doorway are still there um, and we... Um, went up there. It's really fun, really cool, and um, because we are super, super spazzes, we decided to take this picture of us being chased by a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now, I'm an amazing Photoshopper, so I put the dinosaur and the crossing sign in there, but while we were there, uh, we pretended to be chased and took the picture. So I did this, but we were really there. This is where the gates were for Jurassic Park, so we had to do it. So there. The movie tour is a really cool thing. Um, they pick you up. It's like a small group, like ten people fit in the little ATV van. So I recommend it. It was a it was a really fun tourist activity for us to do. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for kids, but if it's just you and your husband or older people in your family, I would recommend it. If that's something that sounds interesting to you, then do it. It's really fun. Next item on my list is the Kauai Adventure Company. Uh, they do zip lining and mountain tubing. Now mountain tubing, I've done. I've not done the zip lining. Like I said before, I have a thing with heights, but the mountain tubing is really fun. It's very relaxing. Um, you get to sit in a tube and you just float lazily down the um, water irrigation system that was set up long, long time ago um, to have the sugar cane come down when they were up in the mountains. So you just float down the water and you go through caves and you just float and it's very relaxing. There's a lunch involved at some point where you can, you go and you eat lunch and then you get back in the thing and you, you know, tube down the river some more. They give you a cute little hard hat with a light on it so you can see in the dark. And then you just float and it gets a little rapidy. And then you go through the underground caves which are really cool. Now the next thing on my list is the Kauai Coffee Company. Now even if you're not a coffee person, it's a really fun thing to do. We don't grow coffee here in Washington State where I live. It's ridiculous. I didn't even know what they looked like while they were growing on the vine. Go and tour the plantation, it's cool. You know, you get to walk through the areas where they grow the coffee, you see the coffee beans, they look like little cherries on, on a plant. It's really cool, I had no idea. Um, 
And then, you know, they show you um, some of the old things that they used to do to make the coffee. And um, you can try little coffee samples and stuff like that. There's a little, you know, cafe where you can buy coffee or iced coffees, hot coffees, that kind of thing. There's a little merchandise area. It's just a really fun little touristy thing to do. So, and it, and it doesn't cost anything to do it. It's free. So, um, it's something that you should probably check out, especially if you're a coffee drinker. They have amazing coffee. It's so good. So, check that out bundled into one thing. It's like multiple things, but it's all in lo one location, which is um, the Gaylord Plantation. Now, um, I believe it's located like around Lahui, um, so it's not, um, and it's right off the road, um, pretty easy to find. They do all sorts of stuff. They have a restaurant, there's the plantation where they, you know, grow a whole bunch of stuff that they produce. Um, there's, they do a luau there, um, and there's a train tour that you can take of the plantation, which is what we did um, with our kids even. It was a 45 minute tour. It was really cute, really fun. The tour guide's really nice um, and entertaining. And um, at the end, you get to feed a bunch of wild boar um, bread, you know, that they're keeping in these pens. Now, you know, feeding pigs doesn't sound that fun, but I've never seen a wild boar in person. I've seen regular pigs here, but they have a whole bunch of wild boar and it's almost like looking at a warthog. They're really cool and they sound different, they look different than normal pigs, so they're fun. And the kids really enjoyed it too. So, um, so it was absolutely something that you should probably go see at least one of the things that's there. Um, one of the one of the last things that I'm going to talk about that is still at Gaylord's is the Kauai Rum Company. Now, it's only been around for like 10 years or so, I want to say, so it's a relatively new venture that they're doing, but they have a free rum tasting um, room where you go in and you pick a time and you sign up for it and then you come back and you get to have free rum. They let you try all the different rums, a whole bunch of different like tropical concoctions that they've got. They have a new one that's called like Pineapple Paradise or something like that and it's like a mixed drink that comes already ready to drink, pour it out into a glass with some um, ice and it was amazing. It's absolutely delicious. Um, they have Mai Tai mixes. They make little Mai Tais for you to try during the tasting and it's free. So that's something that you need to check out. Um, they also have merchandise and that sort of thing. I think I believe I mentioned earlier that I bought a t-shirt while I was there with my 10% off coupon. So um, there is lots and lots and lots of stuff to look at at this particular location. It's really, really cool. So try Gaylord's Plantation. Located right off the highway in Poipu, it's super easy to find. They have the cutest little train ride that's a 45 minute tour. A whole bunch of animals that you'll actually be able to feed with your kids. And they'll have a ton of fun. Not to mention they also have a luau available that you can go see. See at least one of the things that's there. Um, one, of the, one of the last things that I'm going to talk about that is still at Gaylord's is the Kauai Rum Company. Now, it's only been around for like 10 years or so, I want to say, so it's a relatively new venture that they're doing, but they have a free rum tasting um, room where you go in and you pick a time and you sign up for it and then you come back and you get to have free rum. You just go in and sign up for the free rum tasting, you don't have to wait long. You get to try all three of the white rum, the gold rum, and the dark rum. Then they make you a little mini Mai Tai, which is super yummy. Actually, all of the rums are super yummy, and you'll probably end up buying one. They have a new one that's called like Pineapple Paradise or something like that, and it's like a mixed drink that comes already ready to drink, pour it out into a glass with some um, ice, and it was amazing. It's absolutely delicious. Um, they have Mai Tai mixes. They make little Mai Tais for you to try during the tasting, and it's free. So that's something that you need to check out. Um, they also have merchandise and that sort of thing. I think I believe I mentioned earlier that I bought a t-shirt while I was there with my 10% off coupon. So um, there is lots and lots and lots of stuff to look at at this particular location. It's really, really cool. So try Gaylord's Plantation. There's lots of stuff there. There's got to be one thing at least there that you will find fun and entertaining. All right, and last but not least, of course, is one of my favoriteest, favoriteest things about being on vacation, which is the food that you get to eat while you're out. Food, glorious food. While you're there. So first off, um, probably the cheapest, simplest meal that I've got on this um, list is 
Puka Dog. Now, if you've ever watched the Travel Channel or um, Food Network, they have like specialty hot dog places and stuff, like Hot Dog Paradise, I think is one of the shows. And this place is on that show, um, at least one of the episodes of Hot Dog Paradise. Um, now, it, there's two locations now. Uh, there's one in Poipu, in the Poipu Marketplace, and there's now one in Hanalei. So two little spots, one on the North Shore, one on the South Shore. Now, <clears throat> If you don't know what puka dog means, puka just means a hole. So it's a bun, like a big old bread bun, like a big old loaf of bread, not a loaf of bread, but like a bun. And they poke a hole down in the middle of it and they toast the inside with a metal bar and they pop the hot dog down in there, which they give you two choices. There's a Polish dog or a veggie dog. It's really a unique little place. They've got all sorts of different relishes, tropical, coconut, mango, papaya, my husband's not very adventurous, so he got ketchup and mustard on his, but I went authentic. And it was freaking delicious. The second place I'm going to tell you about is Duke's in Willy Willy Harbor. Now, you can go to the beach, and then when you're done at the beach, you can just walk right over to Duke's. Um, it's right there. It's actually really convenient. Who's not starving after being at the beach for hours? Really good happy hour Mai Tais. Um, I've had a lava flow there, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically a pina colada with strawberry puree in it. It's really, really good. It's like my favorite thing to drink in Kauai on vacation. Um, and um, specifically, they have really good burgers. Um, they have a really good, easy, simple, like just a good place to go get, you know, just a restaurant burger. It's a good place to go. Um, they've got really good french fries, um, lots of really good stuff actually. They have quite a few really good things on the menu and it's not too terribly expensive. It's very reasonable. So um, Duke's in Willy Willy Harbor, try it out. This is the lava flow that I had, which was super yummy. And here is their very good uh, bacon cheeseburger. Now, when I tell you the name of this place, it's not going to sound like super amazing, but up in um, Hanalei, there's a place called um, Chicken in a Barrel. Now, it, you might think maybe it's like fried chicken or something, some kind of fried chicken place. It's not. It's a barbecue place. Now, they have barbecued chicken, barbecued pulled pork, they have ribs, they've got a whole bunch of other different stuff too, but specifically um, I got the sampler plate which had all of those meats that I just described in a pile. And here it is in all of its deliciousness. And it came with Hawaiian style coleslaw and Hawaiian style macaroni salad. Now it sounds like a gut bomb and it is, but it's delicious and if you like barbecue, you need to try it because it's delicious and it's yummy and you will feel so good eating it. It's just really good. I mean, it's just, you know, kind of a little taste of like Hawaiian barbecue. It's really good and I highly recommend going and checking it out. I mean, it's, you're missing out if you don't taste it, seriously. The next on the list, now I'm kind of contradicting myself a little bit with what I said earlier about saving money, which is to eat breakfast in room. Now, however, if you, on one of the days that you're in Hawaii, in Kauai, um, and you want to go out for breakfast, this is the place to go, is the Ono Family Restaurant. Now, you can go there for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but specifically breakfast is amazing there. They have tropical pancakes, they have, um, they serve fried rice, fried rice with breakfast items, some of the breakfast items. And here's my breakfast and the fried rice. Heck yeah. Fried rice is like one of the best things that they have there. It's so good. You wouldn't think that it would go good with breakfast. It does. Don't judge me. It does. It goes really well with breakfast somehow. The restaurant is owned by the family. It's the Ono family. They've been there for years. And if you go out for breakfast at least once, you need to go to this place. It speaks for itself. Um, it's just a little podunk little restaurant, mom and pop place, and it's in Kapa'a. Um, it doesn't look like there's anything special about it until you get there. And if you don't get there early enough, you're going to be waiting to get in because it's so popular for breakfast that you're going to be waiting outside, in the lobby, whatever, you're on a list, on a waiting list, if you don't get there and get in before it starts getting crowded for breakfast. So it, just go in and try it because it's really, really good. So go. Um, 
but I have very simple pleasures, very simple, you know, needs as far as food is concerned. And Ono, Dwayne's Ono Charburgers is just one of those little old places right off the side of the road. It's like a dive. And they charbroil all their burgers and they're amazing. Like, if you like sloppy, like wet, juicy burgers that just make you messy when you eat them because the burger's just dripping with flavor, this is the place to go. You need to go there because it's so good and you can get onion rings and french fries and all sorts of other different stuff. They've got milkshakes and malts and it's just one of those places that if you like burgers, you should probably go there. And I have. Many a time. So just go and try the burgers. Um, now it's in um, Anahola, which is kind of like coming up the side of the island out of Kapa'a going towards Princeville. Now, I would look it up on a map and keep your eyes peeled for it off the side of the road because it's such a small little place that you may not even see it when you're driving by it. So keep your eyes peeled and make sure you find out where it is because you may just pass it and not even know what's there. But it's definitely worth making the stop to go and have some lunch or some dinner. Take it back to your room, whatever you want to do. Just go. It's good. So there you go. That's all of my um, tips and tricks and information about the island of Kauai. Um, if you have any other questions or if you have any thoughts or um, information about any of the things that I've listed, um, please feel free to comment below. Give me feedback. I'd love to hear from you. Um, and I will talk to you next time. Um, if you liked my video, please, please, please like and um, press the subscribe button for me. Thank ya. See you next time, guys. Thanks for watching the mini adventures of Mama Toe. Please subscribe and like.